Have you ever wondered what prazosin is used for in mental health? If you have, you're not alone. Prazosin, a medication primarily known for treating high blood pressure, has been making waves in the realm of mental health treatment. It's a fascinating development, considering that this drug, part of the alpha blocker family, was initially developed with the cardiovascular system in mind, not the complex world of the human mind. Yet, here we are, discussing its potential benefits for conditions like post-traumatic stress disorder and even anxiety. This journey of discovery into the uses of prazosin in mental health is what we're going to embark on today. We'll delve into the medical science behind it, explore its applications in mental health, hear from patients who have experienced its effects, discuss potential side effects and precautions, and even look at alternative treatments. So, if you're intrigued to learn more about prazosin, stick around. Before we continue, remember to hit that subscribe button. By subscribing, you'll join our community of like-minded individuals. Together, we can achieve success and wealth as we learn, grow, and support each other. Click subscribe now, and let's dive back into today's topic. First, it's essential to understand what prazosin is from a medical standpoint. Prazosin, a medication that belongs to the class of drugs known as alpha blockers, has been around for quite some time. It's primarily used to treat hypertension or high blood pressure, a condition that affects millions worldwide. But how does prazosin accomplish this? The answer lies in its interaction with specific receptors in our body, the alpha-1 receptors. Now, if you're wondering what these alpha-1 receptors are, think of them as little gates on the walls of your blood vessels. When these gates are open, they cause the blood vessels to constrict, thereby increasing your blood pressure. Prazosin works by blocking these alpha-1 receptors, effectively keeping the gates closed. This action leads to the relaxation and widening of your blood vessels, which in turn lowers blood pressure. Interestingly, prazosin doesn't discriminate between the alpha-1 receptors in your blood vessels and those located elsewhere in your body. So, while it's busy keeping the gates on your blood vessels closed, it's also blocking alpha-1 receptors in other areas. One such area of interest is the central nervous system, where alpha-1 receptors have been linked to certain mood and anxiety disorders. But I hear you ask, how can a drug initially designed to treat high blood pressure have implications for mental health? Well, the answer is not entirely straightforward. The human body is a complex system, and the effects of medications can often be far-reaching and multifaceted. In the case of prazosin, its ability to block alpha-1 receptors throughout the body means it can also impact the way our brains process certain emotions and responses. This has led to its use in treating certain mental health conditions, a topic we'll delve into more deeply in the next part of our discussion. But the fascinating part is, prazosin's effects on these receptors also have implications for mental health. So, while prazosin's primary role in medicine may be to help manage high blood pressure, it's clear that its influence extends far beyond this. Now, you might be wondering, how does a blood pressure medication relate to mental health? Well, it's fascinating how the intricate world of medicine often surprises us with unexpected connections. Prazosin, a medication primarily used to treat high blood pressure, has found its place in the realm of mental health specifically in relation to post-traumatic stress disorder, or PTSD. PTSD is a mental health condition that can arise after someone has experienced a traumatic event. It can lead to a range of symptoms, including flashbacks, avoidance behaviors, and, quite commonly, nightmares. These nightmares can be incredibly distressing, 
often causing sufferers to relive their trauma night after night, leading to poor sleep quality and further exacerbating their condition. Here's where Prazosin steps in. It turns out that Prazosin can help reduce these nightmares. The drug works by blocking the effects of adrenaline in the brain. Adrenaline is the hormone that puts our bodies into fight or flight mode, and it's often heightened in people with PTSD. By blocking adrenaline, Prazosin can help to decrease the intensity and frequency of nightmares, leading to better sleep quality. While the idea of using a blood pressure medication to treat nightmares might seem unconventional, the results are promising. Numerous studies have shown that Prazosin can significantly improve sleep and reduce distressing dreams in people with PTSD. It's a testament to the complexity of our brains and the interconnectivity of our bodily systems. Of course, it's important to remember that Prazosin isn't a magic bullet. It doesn't cure PTSD, and it isn't the right choice for everyone. But it provides another tool in the toolkit for mental health professionals, offering a new avenue for managing certain symptoms of PTSD. It's a reminder that in the world of medicine, we're continually learning, adapting and finding new ways to use the tools at our disposal. And sometimes that means a blood pressure medication can become a beacon of hope for people living with PTSD. While it's not a cure-all, Prazosin offers a new avenue for managing certain mental health conditions. You may ask, how effective is Prazosin in real-world scenarios? To answer this, let's turn to the experiences of those who have walked this path before. Many patients who have used Prazosin for post-traumatic stress disorder, or PTSD, and nightmares have found it to be a game-changer. For some, it was the first time in years they could sleep peacefully, through the night, untroubled by the haunting specters of their dreams. They've reported waking up feeling more refreshed and less burdened by the fatigue that comes from nights fraught with terror. Others have observed a significant reduction in the intensity of their nightmares. The monsters that once lurked in the shadows of their dreams were less frightening, less overwhelming. They've noted that the nightmares, while not completely gone, were now manageable, less intrusive to their daily lives. But the journey with Prazosin wasn't always smooth sailing. Some patients faced challenges along the way. A few reported initial dizziness and lightheadedness, side effects that can occur as the body adjusts to the medication. Others faced more persistent problems, like low blood pressure that required them to adjust their daily routines. There were also those who, unfortunately, didn't find the relief they were seeking. For them, Prazosin didn't seem to make a notable difference in their symptoms. This is a reminder that medications don't have a one-size-fits-all effect and what works for one person may not work for another. That's why it's important to remember that every person's experience with Prazosin is unique. The medication journey can be a roller coaster of ups and downs. It's a process of trial and error, of finding what works best for the individual. It's about working closely with healthcare professionals to tailor a treatment plan that best addresses each person's unique needs and circumstances. And so, we return to the question. How effective is Prazosin in real-world scenarios? The answer is, it depends. It depends on the individual, their unique body chemistry, their symptoms, and their personal circumstances. As with any medication, individual experiences vary, and Prazosin is no exception. As important as knowing the benefits, one should also be aware of potential side effects. Now, let's delve into some of the common side effects associated with Prazosin. First up, dizziness and lightheadedness. These are common experiences, particularly when you first start taking the medication or when your dose is increased. But don't worry, this usually subsides as your body adjusts to the medication. 
If it persists, it's a good idea to bring it up with your health care provider. Another side effect that some individuals experience is a sudden drop in blood pressure when standing, known as orthostatic hypotension. This can make you feel faint or even cause you to faint. To counteract this, try standing up slowly. This gives your body a chance to adjust and can prevent these symptoms. Now, it's important to understand that not everyone experiences these side effects. They can vary from person to person, and some people may not experience any at all. It's all about how your individual body reacts to the medication. So, what precautions should you take when starting Prazosin? It's recommended to start with a low dose and gradually increase it. This allows your body time to adjust and can potentially lessen the severity of any side effects. Also, avoid drinking alcohol as it can increase dizziness and lightheadedness. In the event that you experience any severe side effects, such as a racing heart, difficulty breathing, or a prolonged and painful erection, seek immediate medical attention. These are rare but serious side effects that require prompt medical intervention. Finally, it's worth noting that stopping prazosin abruptly can lead to a sudden increase in blood pressure. So, if you're considering stopping the medication for any reason, it's important to do so under the guidance of a healthcare provider. So that's a wrap on the side effects and precautions of prazosin. But remember, everyone's experience with medication is unique. Remember, it's crucial to discuss any concerns with your health care provider before starting or stopping any medication. While Prazosin can be helpful, it's not the only option out there for managing mental health conditions. There's a full spectrum of treatments available, each with its own strengths and considerations. For instance, Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, or CBT, is a type of talk therapy that can be incredibly effective for many. It's all about identifying and changing thought patterns that lead to damaging behaviors. Then there's eye movement desensitization and reprocessing, known as the MDR. This treatment has shown promise in helping people process traumatic memories making it potentially useful for conditions like PTSD and nightmares. And let's not forget about other medications. There's a whole pharmacopoeia out there, with different drugs working in different ways to manage symptoms. From SRIS to mood stabilizers, there's often more than one pharmaceutical route to explore. As always, the right treatment depends on the individual's specific needs and circumstances. Thanks for watching. Embrace the shadows, hit subscribe, and stay tuned for our next video. Until then, harness the darkness and forge your path to greatness.